Hey everyone, Sean here, Shock Surplus, and I got some teammates here as well, all with their own vehicles, and we are talking Eibach. All we've been doing over the past probably six, no, 12, 18 months is running different shocks on their brand new vehicles uh, that encompass Bill Stein, Fox, Icon, Eibach. Um, so all three of their vehicles have seen at least Bill Stein and Eibach. Jeff Silverado has seen Fox, Bill Stein, Eibach. Steve's Ranger has seen Bill Stein, Fox, Eibach. And Bowman has seen Bill Stein, Eibach, and Icon. So we've got a lot of experience, a bunch of different vehicles. That's all we do here at Shock Surplus is test out shocks on new vehicles and gain the real world experience to bring to you guys. So we figured since all the vehicles were, all the trucks were on Eibach at one point, we're just gonna do one massive review for you guys because we've been getting a lot of questions in YouTube comments, Instagram, all the places, how iBox stacks up to Bill Stein, how does iBox stack up to Fox. Uh, iBox is a little bit of a newer player in this space when you consider Bill Stein, Fox, King, Icon have been around for 10, 15 years with their truck products. So uh, we were excited to test out their new pro truck coilovers and shocks. Um, Steve got to test out the stage 2R systems, which are brand new in 2022, 2023, which are the reservoir shocks. So let's just dive into it. Um, Jeff has a 2020 Silverado 1500. First upgrade for you was the Bilstein 5100s. Yeah, we did 5100s and then we went back to Rancho with the quick lifts yeah. and then the, uh, the Fox 2.0s and then I'm on the iBox now. Fourth stage of your suspension journey, really. How, how did the iBox stack up to Bill Stein, which is the popular kind of comparison that we see, just gobs and gobs of questions? The iBox were a little bit softer than the Bill Steins. Still supportive. I felt like they were more supportive than the Fox 2.0s, but not as firm or harsh, I guess, as, uh, as the, uh, the Bill Steins. Definitely a lot better than the, the, the factory stuff. Yeah. Also supportive, like when we get into terminology here, like we'll never use the, wor the word better because better, better for whom? For specific drivers and whatnot. When I think of support, I think of a non-sloppy ride, yeah. right? And that gets more um, important with the bigger vehicles. Like I, I find it more important for support on bigger vehicles because it feels like some two, two inch shocks don't give good support on like a half ton, especially not a three quarter ton but they provide plenty of support on maybe like a Ranger or a Tacoma. Like that, that issue of support is not too prevalent in the, the mid truck range. And, and I don't know, from my experience, but I don't know. What do you think of when you hear the word support? Um, yeah, so I thing? think, yeah, I think about your suspension saving your butt is really support, right? Mm -hmm. So um, support is when you hit a bump and you're not on your bump stops, you know, you it keeps you off of your bump stops. Mm -hmm. um, you take a turn, and it doesn't feel like it heaves all the way over mm. to one side, or you yeah. hit the brakes and it doesn't feel like you're doing a big fat nose wheelie down the road. So support oh, is, way. is yeah, more control of your suspension, but doesn't necessarily mean that it's stiffer, harsher, or less comfortable. Steve, you've been on Fox and Eibach, and those two are like neck and neck on price points right now in terms of front coilovers, rear shocks, $1,200 range. Mm -hmm. Can you really tell a difference between the two options, you think? Yeah, I think you can. If you want to throw Bill Stein into there too, I mean, again, I always call them the same thing. I always call it the Goldilocks. It's it's not too soft, not too stiff. It's yeah. right in the middle, you know, and it's it really is the blend between the two. Yeah. You know, it's that middle road and right that. So to answer that question, yes, I do think you can feel it. They're they're not as soft as a fox. A fox you seem to get a little bit more body roll out of. It, it's just a different customer. Each one of those shocks is a different person and a different driving style. Did you feel the same squishiness or more squishy on the fox side versus the iBox side? The the foxes were a little bit squishier. Like when I when I told the to come out to Team Moab oh, yeah. on the foxes, I, I did wish I had a little bit more more shock. Yeah, you mentioned you want you wish you had the Bill Steins yeah. for that for that trip. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And by squishy, you know, some people actually want a more squishy ride. Squishy sometimes sounds like a negative connotation, um, but we, we might use that internally to mean one thing when other people will find it to be that plush. When I drove your Silverado, the Fox felt, felt very much like the Ranch of 9000s, where it was like still soft on the compression side of things, but it wasn't the, the heaving and it wasn't the sloppy rebound. Yeah. Uh, so the, it improved there, but it would still maintain that kind of 
cushy Cadillac uh, ride that the OEMs are kind of going for with their under dampened <laughs> shocks from the factory. You haven't had a chance on the Fox, but going from Bill Stein on your Bronco to Eibach directly, you, you had a lot to say about that. Yeah, so I did find that the Bill Steins actually, in my particular case, might have been just a touch softer, but not by much. The Bill Steins probably felt a little bit better over smaller bumps, surprisingly, which is normally not the case, mm -hmm. but they would go straight to the stops if you you know hit something that you may not be expecting. Yeah. Uh, the I-Box were a little bit tighter over bumps, but rather than going to their bump stops on something big, it would almost pop the car off the ground. So you'd be more likely to float the tires off the ground a little bit rather than smack your bump stops. I think that just comes down to the limits of a two inch body. Mm -hmm. And there's two kind of schools of thought. You can either keep them on top of the bumps, which may not give you as much control over the really rough stuff, or you can have it hit the bump stops, which might not be quite as comfortable. I do think the Bill Steins were definitely tighter on handling. For the Broncos in particular, you can tell that they tuned the rear shocks mostly for a Bronco that had a sway bar. Not all Broncos after 2022 get a sway bar. Mine was on the build list and I didn't get one from Ford. So I did feel the rear was really, really loose on these. But if you have a Bronco with a sway bar in the back, I don't think that's an issue. And you also have 35s. 37s. Or you have 37s right now. Yeah. And the Bill Steins and the Haas 2.0s, you were on 35s. Yeah, right? 315, 7017s. And then on your Ranger, what, 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 what tire size? Right now, are there a 34. So it's a 285, 75, 17. Which, which so. brand? Uh, it's a BFG. The uh, all trains. So. KO2s. KO2s. KO2s, KO2s, yeah. What do you exactly, got? So. Maxxis Razor MTs. And then before okay. that, I had the factory Goodyear Wrangler Bronco Spec Duratrax. Okay. And then what do you got on your Silverado? Mine's about a 34, 305 7017s. Okay. All terrain Coopers. Coopers? Okay. Yeah, everyone wants to know real and tire size on the rigs. And especially when you're testing, like, when you're testing a 90 pound package, wheel and tire package versus a 120 pound package. It, <laughs> it makes, makes, a, makes difference. a big difference. <laughs> it makes a big difference. Yeah, one of the things Bowman was talking about on his Bronco is uh, how much there was going from iBox to the Icon 2.5s, uh, how much tire dribble you were kind of experiencing with the Bill Stein 5100s and these iBox, right? Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that also because you have like, inch and a quarter spacers kicking those wheels and tires way out is that contributing into it at all? uh probably not because the i mean and if it is it wouldn't be it wouldn't change if i had a um aftermarket wheel okay the majority of aftermarket wheels for the broncos are have a round to zero offset okay and my effective offset is negative 1.3 millimeters or something like okay. that so okay. it's it's the same it's 125 pound tire and ibox straight up tells you these are for 35s. Yeah. And I think on 35s, sure. they'd be great. On 37s, one, they don't, the, they're too short, fully compressed, so you'll hit the fenders at full bump. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of lift otherwise. On our TikToks and Instagrams, everyone's always like, the rear wheels are going nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's because, so, and that, and in those videos you see, the back tires are basically skipping across the ground. Oh, and cool. while they're skipping, it's basically ping ponging from either side of the ruts. Oh, so it's just man. sitting there ping ponging the that tire. And so even at like 25 PSI on a D load tire, which is probably more than I need, it's still going all crazy because the tire is physically going from on the ground, slapping the side of a wall, back on yeah. the ground, slapping the side of another wall, okay. which I didn't feel that on the icons. Maybe there's some tire wiggle, gotcha. but the tires aren't Okay. Doing a Jimmy Jangle all the time. Steve and, and Jeff both tow often. I want to say heavy, but you guys tow often, right? Uh, you're, yeah. I've seen you tow some track, like a tractor. And yeah. You used to tow the trailer. And my Bronco. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rescuing the Bronco off the lake bed. Yeah, yeah. I know we've talked about this before, but we got to get it here in this comparison. Shock preference for towing out of the three you've tested so far. No question, it's the Bill Steins. Yeah. If you're towing, you belong in a Bill Stein, yeah. like a 5100, or you know, if it's a, depending on the truck, it could be a 6112 yeah. in the front. That really is where it's at as far as towing. Do you, you know? think the Fox and the Eibach subtract towing ability from stock, or is it still a little bit of an upgrade as terms of? I, I think it's an upgrade, per, in, in my opinion, 
I, I've towed on all three. Some people will say, oh, you're towing with the Ranger like that, but yeah. I've towed heavy with the Ranger. Nice. I'm no, towing at max capacity. I'm throwing a flatbed and a truck, you know, his truck or a different truck on, on the back and like that. Um, so it's not light, you know, it's yeah. not a 2000 pound, you know, little utility trailer or something. Yeah. And the Ranger does fine with it and like that, but you do get some more body roll out of the Foxes and like that. The Foxes most of the time are not happy when you put a lot of weight on them. Now that doesn't mean that they can't be valved accordingly and like yeah. that, because that is a possibility, you know, with them. That's a good thing about the Fox and, and all this comparison. Fox is the only thing that could be serviced. Correct. Built. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, right. Can't. Bill Stein 5100. Exactly. Exactly. So I found that the Bill Steins were really the best as far as towing. Right. That yeah. they built gave you the the most confident ride and comfortability. Right. That yeah. when towing. Right. That. So. Jeff, what about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm with Steve. The Bill Steins are, are what I would go with. Um, with that being said, though, anything is better than the stock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on the yeah. on the Chevy truck, I hear that that same complaint with the the factory stuff on three quarter and, and uh, one ton Chevys too. Gotcha. Is the f stock shocks are just way too soft. I've hauled dirt bikes side by sides and the Foxes can do it. Yeah. It's just what level of comfort and control you want. Yeah. Um, for me, I personally like something that's a little bit stiffer, a little bit firmer. Um, so it would be the Bill Steins. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm of the sportier, of the sportier driving type as well, yeah. rather than the, the comfort side of things. And, and I think that's important to point out is that your driving style versus his driving style versus my, the, everybody's different. So yeah. what you may feel comfortable for you, somebody else on the exact same setup may yeah. feel differently. Yeah, my, you know? my better and my best is not, is not your exactly, better. Exactly, exactly. I think that's yeah. really important to say, you know? It's, yeah. The other thing I wanted to ask about as far as like, you know, most people are leveling their vehicle, right? Between Fox and Eibach, we'll just stick with those two comparisons. Yeah. I've noticed Eibach is providing more lift lift range we'll just call yeah. it lift range than fox typically is it, almost than anybody yeah i know that's the case for the ranger was that the case for that was the case for the silverado as well right because fox was only doing two inches and ibach was doing two and a half two that? two and a quarter it's supposed to be two and a quarter okay. um on on my truck specifically though with the the 3.0 out the box i only got about an inch oh, okay but if you had a 5.3 truck, they'll go up to 3.6. So uh, the loss of height on a 3.0 diesel isn't because of length, it's because of spring rate. Gotcha. But they're reliably some of the longest coilovers per application. Yeah, gotcha. Like mine sitting right there, do 3.6 or do 3.6 at the highest on a Sasquatch model. On a 2.3, right? On a 2.3. Yeah, and out of the box, they gave me three inches of lift in the front and almost two in the back. No, not touching anything. Gotcha. Okay. And so I don't know how anybody does that with a stock upper control arm. They say you can. Yeah. But you, the eye box are probably the one coilovers where if you were considering an upper control arm, you probably oh. should do it. Should yeah. It, should yeah. anyways, just yeah. to maximize yeah. performance, right? Yeah. yeah, I think the rule as far as how much lift you're doing versus the control arm, that doesn't change no matter yeah. what yeah. shock you're using. Gotcha. But in this case, across the board, they almost always do higher than anybody else. And, and these can be adjusted on the, on the vehicle as well because they're steel body, mm -hmm. not with foxes because it's aluminum body, right? Yeah, you got to put them on a spring compressor. So, And we get people into these all the time just because they want to make sure their truck is level and so even if it's not level out of the box it's you know 20 minutes to make sure I, I think it's important to note though that just because you can adjust them on the truck that means you still need to take the weight off of the truck you still need to raise the truck up get the weight off of it and write that because if you've got that factory wrench that comes with this and you try to do it with the truck sitting on the ground you're going to snap it yeah, yeah, so let's let's snap one tomorrow, Jeff. You need a oh, yeah, I do I do need a yeah. adjust mine. <laughs> we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that tomorrow. And <laughs> and I will say the included spanner wrench is decent enough. Okay. Yeah. But if you see yourself making you know more than one adjustment in the future, iBox sells an upgraded spanner wrench. Oh, they do. Yeah, I would get it. Or, okay. or it's, it's not this. It's you know uh, twice as thick. Yeah. Depending on application, I'm um, like. 14 to 18 GM half tons use a lot of spring rate on those. Okay. Um, I think they're like a 650 or 700 pound spring and those will reliably snap. Oh, okay. <laughs> or reliably uh, snap. Pro tip, go to Harbor Freight, get the punch set for 899 or whatever it is and just use a, the center size punch. I think it's a 5 16 I want to say, but uh, five, ooh, no, is it, is 5 16 is the two, Fox 2 fives. Yeah. So Anyways, you get the set, you'll have all yeah. of them in the punch set. It's pretty inexpensive and it's a lot easier to use, honestly. So yeah. I yeah. have a set of Kings at home that I use that on because 
versus a wrench and write that stuff. So. They do at least come with the spanner wrench. Yes, they do. You look at two point fives, and and they don't even come with the spanner wrench. King, right. Yeah. King comes with a like a small little yeah spanner, um, yeah. but it's like this long, and you can't get any you, leverage. No on leverage. Them. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so Fox two two O's and two fives don't come with the wrench. That's true. No, yeah. but yeah, you use the Harbor Freight punch. I, no. My icons came with a wrench, but maybe that's just because I got the good guy deal. Yeah, they yeah, don't they, normally do. Yeah. 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 Um, and the other thing to be said about IBOC and the Fox 2.0s is uh, Bowman mentioned spring rate is they use a universal spring yeah. on most applications. Not, a, not, yeah, on, on, the Bronco. Bronco. not yeah. on the back yeah. of the Bronco yeah. shocks. but They yeah. use a, the, a linear spring and you could change out spring rates if, if yeah. you throw anything on the front of the truck. Yeah. Gotcha. Have we had any customers, have we had many customers do that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We had, yeah. yeah. Although these usually can provide so much lift on a stock weight vehicle that a lot of times they don't end up having to change spring rate mm. because if you only want two inches of lift but you can adjust it to four, then there's probably plenty of preload adjustment to give you the height before you get coil bind. Gotcha. Yeah, most people running, yeah, we really only see spring changeovers on the, like the, the big two five shocks often, huh? Yeah, 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 or if it's like the 6112s we do a lot, not because they're two five, but because they're circlip adjustable. Mm -hmm. So it's, since you're limited on adjustment, oh, you know, yeah. like you have five settings yeah. and you want X lift with that X weight, it's you usually end up having to change the spring because there's not as much preload adjustment as you would get with these. All right. They're a warranty way better than Fox's one year. Million yeah. miles. Million yeah. miles on yeah. the Eibach. Spring, yeah. And Fox's one, and one I year think, if you're lucky. I, mm. I, I just want to say that, first of all, you've got, Eibach has been doing this for a long time. Yeah. It, yeah. Not this in particular, but they've been doing suspension for a long time. Yeah. They make everybody springs. Yeah. I mean, so they got to be doing something right. And for them to come out of the gate with something like this, a product like this, that has impressed all of us, I, I think I can say yeah. fairly like that. If they decide to get into the 2.5 game, yeah. everybody better look out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody else is in trouble. I mean, for them to just go this. Uh, I feel yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I want to pitch a 2.5 just IFP sh shock just for the heavy duties because I just want a 2. Point, I feel like a 2.5 shock on my Ram. I don't need the reservoirs, but you do need a 2.5 on these heavier, heavier trucks. Yeah. Well, and e really anything with independent front suspension, there's that motion ratio there. So like if you have a Toyota for every two inches of wheel travel, that's one inch of shock travel. Mm. So the shock is losing all of that dampening force by that same factor. Mm. So you might end up wanting a two and a half inch body shock because they can probably be tuned more comfortably and be more supportive mm -hmm. than a 2.0. Now with that said, these are the best 2.0s anybody has ever made, probably ever. Eibach, unlike everybody else, isn't locked it's in. big to, claim. I, yeah. But I will say, I mean, reliably, they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they probably, you know, are the sweet spot in 2.0s. Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah, and what they do differently than a lot of other companies is they're not locked into like a digressive or linear piston oh, per yeah. application. That's thing too, they change, they've changed it up. They'll change it based on which application. So your front yeah. coilovers, his front coilovers, are digressive. Mm -hmm. Mine are all linear. Mm -hmm. The non-res shocks are digressive for the yeah. rear of the Ranger, but the reservoir shocks, the PTRs, are yeah. linear. Oh yeah, let's we got to get into that. So we did the change of the non-reservoir shocks to the reservoir shocks, which is the uh, the PTR Pro, Pro Truck Two yeah. Pro Truck Two R. But we did that change on trail and noticed an immediate difference where rear end just felt planted less yeah. harsh immediately through just that the rocky trail chatter. We were we were driving pretty fast, but not not, not crazy. Not, not crazy and, fast. And honestly, I, I always tell everybody, I didn't expect to see any change at all. I yeah. really didn't, yeah. you know? And we were kind of expecting just the uh, protection against fade, yeah. right? Yeah, not for a peak. Yeah, not exactly. Not ride quality change. Yeah, yeah. there was. Yeah, absolutely. Now on the street, you don't really notice a difference. Yeah. Maybe if you're flying over a set of railroad tracks, but other than that, you don't notice a difference, honestly. Yeah. But in the dirt, you do, for so sure. It basically subdue, subdues the chatter, yeah. right? That's yeah. like the best way yeah. to kind of put it, subdues well, all that it, rocky stuff. It's just pushing that, pushing that shock back down faster to the ground, and whenever you're making contact to the ground, you're in better control, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Jeff, what do you think is, what do you want to be next after the iBox setup? I think the next step up is going to be the Bill Stein 6112s, that, that, that kind of following the progression of where we where we've been going i think yeah. i think 6112s would be a good move possibly compare that against the the icon exps are the xps out for your truck 
Uh, they were just released, I believe. Okay, I think I saw that email. I think we've already talked about 6112s on, on 6112s or the Dobbinson's IMS, right? Yeah, and I think I, I kind of want to try something out of the box that we haven't done. We, we yeah. talk about Foxes, we talk about iBox, we talk about, you know, Bill Steins and like that, but what else is out there? You know, what else is out there in the world? You know, there's yeah. there's the Falcons, there's... Yeah, uh, yeah Falcon. There's... I'm super curious about the Dobbinsons. Dobbinsons. The Dobbinsons are running, their, running yeah. their 60 millimeter, uh, basically their 60 millimeter high flow linear piston against Bill Stein's 60 millimeter uh, digressive. Yeah. Like that's right, right there is going to tell a pretty good story. Yeah, Whoa. for sure. Oh, yeah. And out of the box, they're a threaded body and not circlip adjustable. Okay. And then Dobinson will use a flat ground style spring, but they won't use like a standard length. Like Bill Stein will typically use a 14 inch, 600 pound spring. I think it's probably mm. a 550 on the Rangers. Dobinson's will end up with like a 15 inch long, 550 pound spring mm. that might give you that two inch lift at, you know, the same amount of preload as a stock spring would and will give you more range for more lift later. So that would be good to compare versus a shorter spring mm -hmm. and more preload, a longer spring and less preload on the shock, probably similar preload, real world preload, mm -hmm. you know. Gotcha. And I think it'll be a good test too, because yes, it's not a Tacoma, but they're very similar. Yeah. They're the same size trucks. Mm -hmm. They're the same suspension oh, yeah. setups. It, it kind of applies over to universal to, to everything, you know? So I think yeah. that'll be a good comparison. The, the Falcon, yeah, bringing the Falcon into mind is that yeah, that's, a, that's another like kind of sweet spot since they're 2.25 shock. And, yeah. and then for you, we're already on to the next set. These are your- These are, these are my old these guys, are the yeah. Box. And yeah. We've moved on to Icon and 2.5s. I'm, yeah, and I'm liking my Icons. I, will, I, I am excited to try the 6112s and 6100s next. Yeah. Because those are very much in the similar price point to these, mm -hmm. but they don't cycle nearly as much traveled they're not as long okay um so i'm interested to see the benefits of a larger diameter body and maybe better tuning because of it versus you know actual wheel travel how oh, much yeah. quality matters over quantity so to gotcha. speak because they bill steins are definitely shorter yeah but i do think a 2.5 or 2.6 inch diameter body will work a lot better. Yeah, it has to do, like that much more damping surface volume just has to do less work than a, a, a two inch shock. More support, basically. Yeah. Well guys, let us know what the what your guys' questions are uh, in the comments, email us. We're, we're constantly taking suggestions on what you guys wanna see next. We've ran all these vehicles in the dirt already, on the street, towing, all sorts of things. And we're just gonna continue that progression through a bunch of different shocks. So. We are taking your input, though, literally, on where to go, what to see, what to run, and uh, we'd love to hear the feedback. And thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the trail.